Hi, I'm Adele, founder and CEO of Be Pampered, a proud Canadian company. Today I'm going to walk you through how to do a henna bee eyebrow tint service in less than 30 minutes. Our products are natural, safe and easy to use. You can purchase our kits at shopbepampered.com where you can be certified and have access to all of our online free training. So before we get started, I just want to show you how I like to set up my tray for my henna bee service. So I have my chart here for a quick reference guide on color choices. I have my ring light so I can take my before and after selfies. I have my bowl of water, my cotton rounds, my henna, I have my aftercare, and I have my ruler. All of my tools I like to put on a tray so that there's no cross contamination between the tools, the skin and the product. I also have my timer and I like to have everything set out and clear on a large tray or trolley so that I can move between my products really quick and easily. All right, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, we wanna make sure we take our before picture for our before and after. Then we're gonna take our cotton rounds and our oil-free cleanser. And we're just gonna remove any excess makeup, any excess oils that are on the skin or around the brows, just so that we can have no barriers between the henna and the skin or the henna and the hair. So what I like to do is I first give it a good little cleanse with the cotton round. And then I like to go in with my exfoliator brush and I put a little bit of cleanser on the brush and I just gently in circular motions just go over the eyebrow area. So just very gentle. We just wanna exfoliate off any kind of surface dead skin, anything that would make the henna patchy and just make sure that you're giving it a good little cleanse in there. This is also very stimulating to the eyebrow, so it also helps promote, if you were to do it on a daily basis, it helps promote hair growth because you're stimulating the area, you're getting all that blood flow circulation in there. So it's actually a really nice thing to do every day, so you could talk to your client about that, giving yourself a little eyebrow massage. So then I'll just go back in with a wet cotton round or damp and I'll just remove all the excess cleanser. So once we're done cleansing, I like to take my heated mask and just apply it over to her, her eyes while we're mixing our color. So you don't have to do this step. I like to do it because the heat helps activate the henna. So it's gonna help with the retention of the eyebrows. We wanna go ahead and choose her color. So I would ask my client, how do they normally wear their eyebrows? Are they usually wearing a lot of makeup? They want them quite dark or do they want them very natural? Um, this is one of my regular clients. So I already know she's a number five, but what I would do is take my chart and I would just assess the situation. So for her, she's got darker hair, lighter skin, but her hair's got more of that reddish kind of undertone to it. So instead of going with a number four, that would be really kind of a mousy uh, brown with no warmth to it, I'm gonna bump it up to a number five and give her a little bit of that reddish undertone for her. It'll be really rich um, and it'll look really nice. So what I like to do is I like to take my dampened dish and I like to turn it over upside down so that you just have that little divot in there. It just allows for less waste of product. I find if it's in here, you just, you use a lot more than you, you need. So normally I just kind of dump the henna out, but as you're getting used to the process and you don't want to waste too much product, you can use the little spoon to scoop out your henna. If you're mixing two colors together, you only need about a pea size total. So you can kind of mix them half and half or two thirds and a third until you kind of get your formula down. So that's about a pea size right there. 
So once we have our pea size amount, I'm just going to take my dropper with some really hot water from the tap and I'm just gonna drop in about four to five drops. And I'm just gonna take my henna brush and mix the water and the henna together. So if you're mixing two colors together, you wanna make sure that you're really mixing it well so that you're not getting an uneven color when you're applying it to the eyebrows. So you mix it really well. And what we're looking for is a nice honey consistency. So we don't want it to be too dry and cakey where it's going to be very uneven when we apply it. And then we're not gonna get any stain out of it. Uh, we don't want it to be too runny because if it's too runny, it's not gonna stay in place as well as it's not gonna hold that stain. So we want it to be a nice creamy consistency where we kind of pull it back and it goes back into place right away. Not too quickly, not too runny, but just very creamy. And make sure it's really mixed well. Again, while you're starting, if you wanna use the other side of the dish to make sure that you're not getting very messy, kind of wasting the product, you can, but I just really like to use the bottom of the dish. All right, so now we're ready to apply it to the eyebrows. So what we'll do is we'll remove the mask. I like to put it off to the side just in case I wanna apply it afterwards. And I'm gonna take my brow ruler. And you just want to apply it horizontally along her forehead like this. You don't have to do this step. If you're getting used to doing the eye shaping, um, this is just a little extra to kind of get you going to kind of give you a guide to work with. And then also if you want, if you want to get a white pen, you can kind of, or a, a brow pencil will work too. You can kind of use your guide for your starting points so that you can kind of see where you're going to start the henna and then where you're going to have your arches. So when you're looking at your starting point, sorry, I'm just gonna pull this down just for a mm -hmm. second. When you're looking at your starting point, you wanna go, the general guideline is the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye and up. And then when you're looking at your arch, you wanna go the corner of your nose to about halfway through the eye and up. And then the end, you wanna go corner of the nose, to the corner of the eye and up. So that's just a general guideline. You don't have to go by that. Um, every eye is different. And when you're doing the henna, you don't want to go too far off of their natural brow line, just because we're not microblading, we're not creating a new shape, we're just enhancing what they already have. So you kind of want to go with their natural shape, but you can definitely even it out a little bit if you need to. So you can use that as a guide and then you can sort of match it up on the other side using your ruler. So that's kind of how I like to get started. But if you have any other kind of brow mapping technique, you're more than welcome to use it here. I'm going to just remove this. So now I'm gonna apply my henna. So I'm gonna grab my henna with my brush and I'm gonna start from the middle of the brow to the end. So instead of doing quick little motions, we kinda of wanna do longer strokes. We wanna kinda of get it even underneath the skin. And so what we wanna do is apply it. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We just want to sort of apply it in long strokes and evenly along the brow. And you can kind of see how, I'm just kind of throwing it on there. And then what I like to do is take my Q-tip with a little bit of damp water and clean up the edges. So you have a couple of seconds to kind of work with it. It's not going to stain immediately, unless you're using number six. Number six is, is pretty potent. 
So it's going to stain pretty quickly, so you got to work quick with it. But the rest of the colors, you have some time to work with it. So I'm just going to go around, clean up my edges. And at this point, I like to set my timer for five minutes. So I'm going to move to the other brow. Again, in long sweeping movements, make sure that the henna is touching the skin. I'm going to take my Q-tip and just go in and clean up my shape. And then once I kind of have my base shape in, I like to go back over with a little bit more henna and just kind of fill in just a little bit. You don't want it to be too thick because we want it to, we want that air to kind of activate it and then we want it to work. We don't want it to be too thick that there's nothing getting underneath. So I just like to go over and make sure that it's nice and even. You can take your Q-tip and clean up the lines again. So a little trick that I can share with you that I like to do, if I find that I go to use my henna and I'm, I just don't have enough, I like to just add one more tiny drop of water and just swirl everything around, everything that's in the brush, press down so that it comes out of the brush and it just gives you that little bit extra that you need to work with if you need a little bit more. So that's like a little tip just to get that little bit left out of the henna. Okay, so our five minutes is up. So I'm gonna take a wet cotton round and I'm just going to remove the first part of her eyebrow here, just about a centimeter, I mean half a centimeter, sorry. Just because we want it to be faded throughout, we don't want it to be kind of dark from the very beginning, we want it to kind of fade out. So I'm just gonna remove a little bit I like to kind of remove it a little bit on an angle and then I'll go back through with my brush and just kind of make sure that it's, instead of it stopping here, we'll kind of fade it out. So I'll show you. So I'll take my henna brush and I'll just kind of use the henna to kind of make a nice transition. So now we're going to set the timer for another 10 minutes. Before we remove the entire brow. Okay, so now that our 10 minutes is up, you can see that the henna has dried a little bit. So what I'm going to do so that I'm not rubbing it really hard to get it off is I'm going to just wet a Q-tip and just dab over top of it to re-wet the henna. 
So we want the henna to dry because that's what's going to activate the henna and leave you with that nice stain. But we don't want to just go ahead and rub it off because you're going to be sitting there for a while rubbing. But if you just dampen it with a Q-tip and you can see that it's getting re-wet, it'll come off a lot easier. So I'm going to take a wet cotton round. And I'm just going to gently wipe off the excess henna. And then I usually like to go in with a spoolie just to make sure we get all those bits underneath. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to take a wet Q-tip. And this is just the leftover warm water from when we were activating the henna or we were mixing it with the henna. And this is just our water from the bowl. And you can see it just comes off real nicely. And I'm just going to get a clean cotton round. And then I'm going to use my spoolie just to get off any of those little bits that are underneath her hair there. And at this point you can carry on with your hair removal service. So you can do threading or waxing. I always recommend doing it at the end of the henna service because we don't want to have any open skin or anything and then you're applying the henna on top. It can cause a reaction um, and we just want to make sure that we do that service first and then we go ahead with our hair removal. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly give her a little bit of an eyebrow wax. And just kind of clean up those edges. It just kind of finishes off the service. It's a good way to sort of upsell your service as well. You're already here. It doesn't take that much more time. So using a soft wax is okay for when you're going after the henna because it will adhere itself to the skin and so it's going to take off any extra um, little henna bits. So if you do need to kind of fix up the shape a little bit, you can go in with your wax and it'll kind of take it off the skin. So it just leaves that really crisp line. If you're using a hard wax, it's going to adhere itself to the hair more than the skin. So you're going to have a little bit more tweezing, um, but it is definitely really safe for the, for the client to use a harder wax. So I'm just going to go in now with my antiseptic now that we've waxed and just give her a good little wipe around the skin area and then I'll go in with my tweezers
And then to finish off my service, I like to provide them with a little bit of eyebrow soap just to kind of give them a little bit of a shape. And then it's a great opportunity to talk to them about any retail that you might have. So you just dip your wand in a little bit of water. You rub it in your soap. And you don't need very much product at all. You just kind of give them a nice little shape, brush them into place. I love this eyebrow soap. It's not shiny at all. It gives a nice matte finish and it holds all day long. And then I'm gonna go in with my brow highlighter to finish it off. Again, this is a great opportunity to talk to your clients about any retail. So what I like to do is I take the brush, the back of the brush, I take a little bit of product and I put it on the back of my hand so that you're not double dipping, you're not getting any cross contamination. And then you just kind of grab a little bit of product and you get it on your brush and you just kind of create the line to make it nice and crisp. And it just kind of makes your client feel a little bit extra special like they had a, an extra sort of treatment done. It also takes away any redness so then you can, your clients can go back to work go out and do their grocery shopping, all that kind of stuff, and not feel like they're all freshly waxed. There, so that's our service, our henna bee service, and it is done in less than 30 minutes. If you have any questions, you can email me at hello at bpampered.ca, and you can find all of our kits and supplies at shopbpampered.com.